Okay, if you talk about uh, multi-layer perceptron, this is the arrangements there. Again, uh, we are in in artificial neural network. Uh, in this chapter, uh, we will discuss about the multi-layer perceptron, a simple multi-layer perceptron. The the picture is like this, where you have only a single uh, hidden layer, a single inner layer. Of course, this that this should be in between uh, the input layer and the output layer. And then uh, again, uh, this one later we will discuss again later about how to arrange the matrix there because again uh, how to label this one because uh, I will have some example on how to label this one in, in, in a meaningful way. So you then you, need, you, you can identify uh, which W, uh, this W is, is referred to which uh, network, uh, network lines there. Which we uh, which uh, okay so 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 because uh, later we need to to make sure that we we can uh, can have a meaningful notation there or labels there so then you are not lost uh, at the dead architectures okay we will talk about that later okay uh, so. Uh, Okay, this one is still a multi-layer perceptron, but this one is is include with bias. Remember, I just discussed about the B there. If when we discuss this one, we are avoid or we just neglected the bias, the B there. So we assume the B there's no B in that equation. So that's why in your equation there is just a multiplication between your W and your X, but there's no plus B there. But uh, of course. Uh, you can also have that kind of architecture where you also include the bias like this one so if you talk about bias so this mean for example this is the 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 network the, the network one of your hidden layer so to find your your net there again to find your net there now i i, I directly using net eh? your net for example i call this as a net H1 because that one is belong to this net is a hidden layer where the hidden layer of neuron 1 so that's why hidden layer of neuron 1 H1 so net H1 is equal to the summation of your i's there wi xi plus with your b there b1 so uh, b H1 there so later we will try to make sure this symbol is meaningful this bh1 is this one is this line okay this is your bh1 so this one there's a w11 uh, one, one, for example so this one is w21 so 1121 and then 101 w101 so so then of course uh, le this the input for so bias is always one it's a fixed to one one time b h1 is become b there so that's why you you make sure this component is not include with this uh, component because you can see that this one is multiple with one but this all w is multiple with their corresponding x1 x2 up until x100 so that's why this components cannot be include inside this thing because uh, it's not like the, your previous lecture where you use a theta 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 not because theta not is is also uh, I think the theta not is also here right theta not because theta not because you assume uh, it's multiplied with one so in drawing this architecture if you want to replace the theta not with the bias there then the B there is represented by this line because means that this line have their own weight but the weight is, is called not called W is called B B there and the input is 1 so that's why if you do the equation there it's like a summation of W I multiply with X I plus your bias B there and then again uh, the output here the O here which is uh, distribute into this many many line O here should equal to should equal to O this one is OH1 is equal to your F 
the activation function of your net H1 H1 so this net is going into that as an input of your activation function to get your O there so so that is the notation later we'll, I will show you the example or the mechanism of a neural network uh, how actually it had been trained uh, in, in, in what we call as a back propagation and again the back propagation is related to, y to your gradient descent because the back, back propagation itself uh, the unit of uh, or the, 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 the basic uh, function to, to generate the back propagation is a gradient descent Okay, as for activation function, I think uh, some of you, uh, some of you have asked about this one. Which one is the best? Uh, later we'll discuss. Of course, of course, uh, in in this slide we talk about. We, I just show you some example of of the activation function, and even I forget to 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 put several activation function that is not inside this slide. Okay, for example, identity, the one that we use in linear regression and then uh, sign function sign function and then we have also uh, I think uh, this is sign function uh, sorry this is sign this is sign this is unit step so of course this one is unit step is for perceptron uh, perceptron algorithms if you remember the history there and then uh, of course because uh, because there's a no smooth transition there means that it's a very strict or rough decision it can be either 0 or 1 that is the disadvantage of unit step function that's why they introduced to a more uh, smooth transition like this one because you can see that the, the what is the difference between sigmoid and unit step unit step you have a hard decision it can be either 0 or 1 but this one you still have uh, a, a, a continuous number represent the probability it can be a probability if is this output uh, the output is a probability the probability of the output is either can be going into that direction or that direction meaning that if the probability uh, the probability of the output here you get uh, 0 0.4 meaning that the probability that this classifier uh, or this pattern is classified as as uh, as zero is higher because you, the, the probability is 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 equal to zero point four because zero point four is more close to zero than 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 one so you have a smooth uh, decision there so so that's why they improving by introduce with a smooth function as compared to uh, to this uh this um uh unit uh, this unit um this unit step function but uh, uh never mind i di i we will we discuss this later because i think it's better for you to understand the back propagation algorithm first before you can we can we can discuss on the detail why uh from here this one is improving actually uh, the most common one that have been used in uh, if you if you Google the fact about the activation function, the most common one to be used in C, uh, to be used in artificial neural network is sigmoid function, and then people try to improve that because there's also a disadvantage of the sigmoid. They introduce you with this uh, tang function. Okay, you can see that the tang and the sigmoid is almost similar in shape, but this one is look like a sine function but in a soft decision is if you talk about a sine function there there should be a binary as well it's either plus one or minus one but it's a still the hard decision there then they, they th people try to introduce with this one which is a soft decision or the small smooth transition there from minus one to positive one but it might be this one is a better in terms of the range there instead of from 0 to 1 you have a wide range from minus 1 to 1 so why a wide range is better we will discuss that later there's a there's an improvement on that 
there, there's a benefit of that in introduce a wide range of transition instead of zero to one you have a minus one to uh, positive one and then uh, the one that you I don't introduce yet is what we call as a railway rectifier unit a rectifier linear unit okay ReLU is a rectifier rectifier linear unit recently this one is the most popular one especially in uh, in in deep learning okay previously when there's no deep learning the one that is uh, the most popular one is a sigmoid because sigmoid is suitable and a very good activation function in in artificial neural network but when people try to to explore the deep neural network they find out sigmoid is not or the tank function that is not relevant anymore and the, the one that have a good give, provide a good result in deep learning is this one which is a relu okay this is also advantage on that we will explain again later okay we will explain about this this uh, facts later okay so you can but but you can read that you can read that the the the, the facts there why sit more and then tongue function work better because they have zero center you have a wide range there from minus one to plus one but still the problem is that uh, still the, the saturation kill the gradient same as the sigmoid also have the, the same disadvantage where the, the saturation kill the gradient and then that's why it's not suitable to be used in deep neural network or deep learning so that's why they're using the rectifier unit to do that 